Hello and welcome to episode 64 of the Fools on a Hill podcast where we bring you the latest news and our expert opinion on the newest releases in the world of music. I'm Cal and I'm joined by Yanni and Liam. Hello boys. <laughs> Hello father. <laughs> I really run it out of uh, ways to introduce you so we're just going to get worse each week. We need no introduction. No. No. no well we, we do for uh, the, uh, yeah. the people that, that only listen to us. Those yeah, weirdos. Get yeah. to the 21st century. Yeah. And um, watches as well. God. Use your eyes. <laughs> use your eyes. We put so much effort into this. Use your eyes. God gave you two for a reason. Mm. Unless you're a pirate. Oh, yeah. People born mm. pirates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any news? Any any updates? I think you've got a leftover tale, haven't you? Uh, it's mm. not my tale to tell. Um, last week, <laughs> I... Uh, I kind of brushed over the fact that uh, Caris thinks she's been abducted. Um, she's not like some sort of alien person, really. She's just mm. adamant that one night in our uni house that uh, she was she was taken in the night and returned before I woke up. Um, so quite often I do say, you know, there's no reason they returned you. Ha, ha, ha. So, Caris... Um... I mean, there's a lot of questions there, none of which we can ask because we haven't actually... <laughs> it's a one-sided heard. conversation. <laughs> yeah. So the um, the third part in the trilogy will be addressed next week. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, That's what we wow. called viewer retention. Should we, should we pose questions for her to answer and then we'll get the answer next week? Sure. No, we will. Ne- it's going to be... No, that'll be... Yeah, that'll be... Yeah, exactly. Quadrology. It'll be like Sam Raimi's cancelled Spider-Man 4, but we'll we'll go through with it. Right, Okay. <laughs> Um, sure the only the premise as well. Yeah, exactly. We'll get Bruce Campbell in. Um, <laughs> Peter Pab. Uh, anything else to say? Uh, no, we did see um, Doctor Strange too. What we did. Did. Didn't um, we? No, it was good. Nothing. Crazy, very good. Scary. Was it? Was it madness? Flappy yeah, bombs. Yeah. Uh, um, and you know. That's it, because we're getting a bit boring, aren't we? What's the story? Mm. Liam, what do you call your sex pistol? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know this, Johnny. You should know this. I call oh. it Danny Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're referring here in a slightly innuendo fashion. Uh, mm. To the new Sentence. Sex Pistols series named Pistol, yeah, you heard it first, coming to Disney Plus on May 31st. Um, have you seen the trailer for this? No. No, actually. Oh. Well, you should because it looks pretty good. It's uh, based on the guitarist Steve Jones' memoir, um, which is called something, I don't write that down, directed by Danny Boyle, aforementioned. Bingo. Um. And it looks pretty good. Is what Does I'm it look say. Good? And I mean, not visually. It, it's recorded like the grain on the um, camera nice. footage. Love a bit of grain. It looks yeah. like it was filmed in like, was it like the late seventies? Seventies. Yeah. Crystals. It genuinely looks. It looks very, very good. It looks like found footage from that era, and I think they've done a great job with it from the trailer. Anyway, um, I mean, I don't know much about the Sex Pistols story. I no, no, a few no. characters. Mm. In that tale, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I've got uh, some yeah. pistol based trivia if you'd like to hear it. Well, it's a Absolutely. question. I Come require on. an answer. Could you tell me what musician formerly went by the name JJ Pistol A? It's not really pistol based trivia, but it uses the word pistol in it. So, reminded me of it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that from the JJ part? Uh, is it not? No, <laughs> sorry, I didn't uh, think that really required. Does it relate answer. to this week's music that we cover by any chance? No. Or? Oh, I don't know. It's a band idea. that we it's we really... used to like. Oh, it's a band, did you say? Oh uh, well, no, it's the singer from a band, but okay, that we used to like. Yeah. J J Pistol A. It's like Pistolette, but I assume it's pronounced Pistol A. 
Just that's pistol. just. Oh, pistolet. Okay, right. Okay, pistolet. Oh, pistolet. I well, assume it's ring pronounced. More of a bell. Yeah, you, you will know. You'll know. you'll kick yourself. Go on. Uh, Justin from the vaccines. Uh, okay. That well, could be completely be false, like and I might have uh, might have made that Can't one up. Creating, uh, fake if you've made that line. up out of nowhere. <laughs> No, it's that, someone's definitely probably. called that, but I don't know whether or not it's just in. I'll have a Google. Go on, have a wee Google, why don't you? But anyway, yeah, yeah it's out May 31st, which is uh, only three weeks away. That is soon, yeah. Well, you know, I love all these sort of music documentaries and films. I know it's not a do- documentary, it's a film, but, uh, well, series, sorry. Um, but I, I like all that stuff. Yeah. And Danny Boyle, you know, he's, he's all right, isn't he? He's pretty all right. All right. And it's got um, Maisie, what, I can't remember what's name. Maisie Williams? From Game of Thrones. Maisie Williams, yeah. She's in it. Very the good. Blonde hair, it looks. Um, <laughs> wow. It, um, sorry, one more fact uh, that I thought was quite interesting is that the cast are actually like 21, 22, um, which I think is good. So it's like the age that they would have been at the time. I checked. Johnny Rotten was 21 when the Sex Pistols started. So I think that's pretty cool. I like that a lot of things are doing that now. Actually, using young actors. Yeah, instead of hiring thirty-year-olds to play teenagers. Yeah, I mean that's also fun in its own way, but it, uh, it's good to see it properly represented. What's next? We're into music now, real music. We are real music. Real music. Black Midi are back with their third album, Hellfire, and that is mm. to be released on July fifteenth, uh, Mum and Dad's wedding anniversary. So that's what what better present? Uh, I'm not going to get them anything anymore. What's the day before Man and Mole's anniversary? Well, there we are. That's the. Uh, I won't say. It. I but uh, I don't know. Um, it's um, it's the middle of summer. Yep, day before I go and see uh, Kevin Bridges. No. Yeah. Okay. It is. <laughs> um, why? Special why did I know that? Uh, bingo. Because we were doing something on the same day. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did ask. Maybe question your anniversary. No, sorry, no, no, I sorry. I, I read that as June. It's July. It's day before Mo's birthday. Not our anniversary. Yeah. Sorry, I can't get. I can't read. <laughs> is is um, is that surprise? Is that a surprise, or do people know about that? That's why people know about that. Okay, good. yeah, Bongo's bingo. Go kind of mental. Um, yeah, sorts, mate. Um, next, Casabian uh, are back. They've announced their album. First one since Tom has been ejected from the band. Uh, the Alchemist's Euphoria. Snappy title. Mm. It's due out August 5th. And we've got a song that we're going to review in a second from that upcoming album. And just you wait. Um, um, I don't know who wrote this down, but it's actually written with loads of like upside down Vs and fucking... Epsilon and all shit Yeah, but it's it's called the Alchemist Euphoria. Yeah, Epsilon. I didn't want one of us to have to try and decipher that. Yeah, cool. yeah it would Just have been me. Uh... Um, and then, um, who's this? <laughs> it's only Ezra Furman. They've announced an album, All of Us Flames. So, yeah. hot stuff, all baby. Um, coming out August 26th. So, um, spicy... You know, it should be hot. It's August. Um, will it be flames? We'll see. Probably. Be all right, won't it? Do you know where else is hot, though? The hot off the press segment, Liam. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's in the title, you scumbag. First. From, um... oh. You from... I, I thought I'd I thought I'd start this time. Go on then. Yeah, he stamped right Go on. on uh got a few that we missed from last week, haven't we, boys? Yeah. Uh, yes. you know, we don't like to we don't like to miss any decent ones out. Uh, or not decent or whatever. We just don't like to miss out. So here we are. First one being Working Men's Club song Circumference. What do we think about this one? Bit of a um bit of a it's playing down my ear really loudly then. <laughs> um <laughs> is it by magic? Bit of a stonker, I think, personally. Yeah, I I liked it, but I couldn't really pinpoint why. Yeah, um, same. But I did like it. The synth was a highlight, so that's probably why I liked it. <laughs> yeah, very eighties. Yeah. Um, Gary Newman vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 
corrected that to Gary Animal <laughs> on my <laughs> <laughs> on my uh, notes there for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's it. Did sound like I don't know whether it's a Gary Newman song or something that if he samples one of his songs. But anyway, uh, yeah, I thought I got that from it. Um, really did a good job of sounding like what it was going for, rather than just sound like an imitation. It 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 sounded like the correct thing. Which was pure eighties, wasn't it, boys? Yes. Sorry, I don't, 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 don't like cutting across your point. Um, TV yeah, I agree priest. With, um, okay. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you think? Really? Come on, tell me. Tell Sorry, me, tell me. The, the buzzing from my laptop is putting me off, so that's why I feel a little bit out of time. Um, the um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it did a really good job of what it was trying to do, and um, yeah, the more I listened to it. More, I just kind of was vibing with it. I've not really enjoyed any of their stuff previously, and I think they're a bit wankish. <laughs> and I say that because I'm not sure if I'm thinking of the right people. Um, but I believe I've seen things from this band that are wankish. Um, but you know, decent tune. Everyone can be forgiven for decent tune, can't they? Everyone. <laughs> TV priest, Limehouse cut. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And a bit more, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a good cheer, wasn't it? <laughs> I, uh, I, don't think it de- I don't think it deserved that many years. Um, I thought it was... You, you had interrupted sure me. Where the years were going, what were the years? Uh, I couldn't quite pass out the years. Uh, uh, the yeah, 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 yeah. The next uh, band we're covering. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was all right. I wasn't blown away by it at all. Um, yeah. If anything, I was didn't think it warranted being left on from last week's missed song. That's a sarcastic message. It was, yeah. I I did I, I did know that you didn't really get where I was going with it, but uh, it's not yeah. the response I was expecting. But I'm glad you liked it. Maybe I should give it more time. Yeah, you should. Um, I did like it, and uh, the only thing I would say is that I don't think it was necessarily a great single, but I can imagine it sitting very well on the album um yeah like it 100 sounds like a really solid album track um i just and i had in mind the previous song that we listened to by them from this album as well like it sounds like it's going to be pretty all right to be fair mm-hmm. Liam, this what do you think me, this actually made me pre-order the album and oh paid for not not rough trade pre-order <gasps> where the cash will come out and i'll probably cancel it I cash it real cash this that is the highest compliment Honestly, you, anyone will get on this podcast. I put mm. liquid cash into this album. Um, hey, uh, no, I really like it. I think it's got, um, I think I just love the sound of it. I think it's really kind of like oppressive sounding in a good way. You know, of course. How can it be a bad way? Uh, it reminds me a bit of um, some of the Viagra Boy stuff. Um, Who? Vocally, the Viagra Boys is. Um, but yeah, I really like the guitar and the bass, that really weird guitar line that goes throughout with kind of scratchy sounding. Love that. Mm. And then like the strings that come in. I don't know, I think it's just a really good song. And and the other single is a fucking bop. So, you know, fingers crossed here, boys. Oh, she's a dirty to... hair, isn't she? I um... went back and listened to the single before the one we covered. Or it might have been the B side to that, and that's also very good. So, yeah, that, that's why Liam is that. getting a new favorite band. What sounds it? Maybe. Um, moving on, Ice Age. Um, the song is called "All the Junk on the Outskirts." I like this. Um, want this on the album to go straight into like a banger, mm-hmm. like immediately as soon as this finishes, straight into some it like yeah. full throttle. Because throughout it, I was expecting that, and it didn't. But then the, the end sort of goes in a way that makes me think it will do that. So if it doesn't, I would mm. be very disappointed by the placement of this, if this is going to be on an album. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I enjoyed it to a certain extent, but didn't really rock my socks again, to be honest. Same with kind of all the last week's tracks. Just didn't really hit me in the right place. Where would that right place be, though, Cal? Well, to buy me a drink first. <laughs> oh, you know? cheeky. cheeky. 
I agree with the it should go into a heavy track, but the way this actually ends, it actually fades to it goes to nothing for a second or two, which if that is the final version of that version on the album, it won't work unfortunately. But yeah, they would cut it right at the end of that kind of like um um what's it called? This is kind of like distortion running off. What's it called? And you leave feedback kind of sound. Um, then yeah, I definitely agree with that, but. I don't think it will. Sick. Uh, moving on to this week's tracks now. We've got quite a few, so strap yourselves in. Uh, this this accent's coming immediately. Um, Crush You're Puppies. So well with it as well. Thanks, mate. They did re- uh, finally release the full EP. We're only covering one of the songs. Unfortunately, I didn't know what song that was, so I listened to the whole thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the song was Everybody Wants to Be a Cowboy. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame because that was probably my least favourite. Yes, I thought it was very boring. I literally wrote down wow. the word mid. It was <laughs> it, it was all right. It, it, I've said this oh. quite a lot so far, but it just did not do anything for me, really. I don't did think it warranted being... Nah, I don't think it warranted being a closer. It was okay, though. Didn't hate it. That's I think positive. it was very strange that they released the first three songs of this four-track EP as singles. I don't really know why you would do that. Um, I agree. I don't think it was a good closer as well. Everybody wants to be a cowboy. I think why would have been better. Um, but the more I listen to these four tracks, I actually quite like them. All four of wow. them, including the last one. Um, I just like the I like the vibe again. It's something I can't put my finger on. But uh, I think as a as a four piece EP. <laughs> Four track EP. It works a lot better. I suppose. Sorry. Go on, no, no, it's not sorry. Um, I mate. suppose that's what it's all about, isn't it? But do either of you See? want to be a cowboy? No, I want to be a pizza boy. Oh, yeah. didn't even mean that, but that's word. Bloody lovely. Um, yeah. yeah, everything, everything. Our, our, our friends, our, our, our pizza boys back with the fourth single from Raw Data Feel. Uh, it is called Pizza Boy. And I must say, me. it sounds so much better in the studio than it did live. Yes. Um, did not really resonate live, to be honest, at all. Um, and it makes it sound like it's from the same world as the other three singles, which I am a big fan of. Is the club, am I right? It, it is the club. And the bass has all the funk... That would fill a club that I would want to go to. Uh, I have to say, it is the worst of the four singles, in my opinion. Yes, Uh, your opinion is valid, but the other three are just that good. Um, And but the extension of the chorus—I don't know if it is the actual chorus. The bit after the "I'll have a Coke, I'll have a Pepsi," where it goes really high. Mm. Oh, that gets me in the place. (laughs) That does funny things to my tummy. What a lucky song. Delicious. Uh, Cal. Hello. Whoa. Uh, that's a mirror reference. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you expected like a call and response there. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll do my Freddie Mercury. Hey! <laughs> live age, yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah, I can't really uh, say anything more than what you said without being a complete and utter liar. <laughs> I'm not going to be that. Yeah, um, character. I will add that I thought the synth sound was really good in this. I mean, it was, yeah, I thought it was a very good track. I, I, I do agree that it's the least best of the four, but I don't. <laughs> I feel like worst is a hard. Yeah, I think that is a, true, a harsh adjective. Harsh. Yeah, I put the worst of a good bunch. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't agree with you about the live thing. That's a bit. First of all, Yanni went for a piss during this song. No, I didn't. No, it was Jennifer. He went for a piss through. No, we all heard Jennifer. Jennifer was first. <laughs> I went so for a piss only... through Black Hyena. Oh, he did. You... I'm almost certain you missed some of Pizza Boy, though. He might have gone to the but... bar for this one. Oh, possibly. Possibly, yes. But I. <laughs> Me at the bar? This Never. One, this compared to Jennifer was a lot better. I remember thinking that on a night. I was enjoying it a bit more. But I think it's, you know, you don't know the song. It's not going to feel like. It does when you listen to it properly. So. Maybe so. Um, yes. Um, 
Opus Kink oh. or Resident People. Oh, I've not listened to this. You, you bitch. Stupid, stupid fool. Dog. <laughs> oh, give me two minutes. That's dog, stay down. Really and well, I'll talk about it very quickly. The there. track is called Dog, Stay Down. It's from the EP, uh, which is called Dog, Stay Down. Uh, it's not an EP. It's a single, but it uh, features two it of is the on previous... EP. Why does it say single? It will then? be on an EP. It will be on an EP, and building. it's not called Dog Stay Down, but um, I don't know what it's called. We've all pre ordered it, Yanni. <laughs> have we? We have, uh, yes. I can it, find it was out like, give me one. It was like 75 uh, versions available. Okay, well, that's um, weird because on Apple Music, it more? says Dog Stay Down single, and then it has the previous two singles on that single. That's what Spotify does. You always seem so confused about this, Yanni. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Is it not Because it doesn't normally happen to me. Yeah. Um, so um, that's why I'm caught off guard. Anyway, I uh, didn't really have this song. Did Shock. you not? Nope. Oh, I I liked it quite a lot. I liked that it was a slower one and it sounded different to the other ones with, with their quite unique style on it. And I thought they did it to the same success level as the others. I like, I like wow. it a lot. I just love this band. I just I just find them fantastic. Oh, why you Fuck yeah, married him. Fuck off, Liam. At least I listen to him. You, you bitch. Um, <laughs> Is that a line, Cal? Just, just listen to it then. And um, yeah, it sounds all right. I, d- I don't. I actually don't know which way I would. Uh, I'm going to end up being on this one between you two. So somewhere in the middle. Week. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, box, yeah, uh, and fantastic live act. Uh, we'll. Preach this every time we, we cover them, but go see them live if you can. I can't wait to see them live again. Unreal. Oh, um, next, we have Personal Trainer with the song Rug Busters, which sounds like a euphemism. That's a naughty um, word. That's me, baby. <laughs> um, okay, I thought this is what the song was. Um, but I thought the mix was a bit flat. Mm. Which I get that. I genuinely wouldn't normally pick up on, but when I was listening to this, uh, those were my the thoughts that took over my mind. Guys, please talk. Um, this Stop is talking. my personal favourite of the personal trainer songs I've heard so far. Personally, um, I really liked the, the just the vibe to use Liam's phrase. Uh, I like the tone of uh, the guitar. I think I assume that is. I just put I love the tone, but I don't know what I love the tone of. And in a real surprising turn of events, I loved the vocals, which these are not vocals I would typically like. Wow. Um, no, this isn't something that I'd expect you to like. Whatsoever. No, but it's it's good. And the name is just fantastic. It is a great name. Do you know what, Carl? Oh, here he is. Take a look at it really is a good job. We've, uh, we've gone visual, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, he was holding up a mirror that. for people listening. There was a mirror there, yeah. There was a mirror being shown. You should watch the videos, really. Um, but yeah, I agree. I really uh, do enjoy this um, song. I think it's quite fun. It reminds me of Cheek Face quite a bit. Vocally. Yeah, that's why I didn't think I'd like the lyrics, but I do. Maybe I like the next time Cheek Face release a song. Oh, imagine. Absolute scenes. Um, be on the don't hold your breath, though, boys. Okay. Uh, Pond. Uh, releasing another track. I think this is from like a deluxe version of number nine. nine. Number nine. Uh, the song is called "Hang Across on Me." Funky funk, hips are moving. What a bizarre feature. Those are my three sentences. Um, <laughs> um yeah, I, the funky funk, but it felt grittier than normal. Uh, I always love Nick's vocals, despite them not being necessarily the best. Uh, could have easily been on the album, and it wouldn't have been any worse. Mm. Yeah, I think um, it really shocked me, both lyrically and, and vocally. The kind of melody it felt very poetic and very emotional uh, from Cowboy John. <laughs> uh, really went for it on that on that feature. Everybody does want uh, to be a Cowboy John. Yeah, that went by. No, I think the song's this is a, a good tune. Maybe a little bit long, but it went on a little bit longer than I needed it to. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. There's a part of it where he's... You're losing the mate. He, Come on. Well, I'm, I'm thinking. There's a part of it where he sounds like he's going to start singing Raspberry Beret. Yes. 
Which every time he sings uh, whatever that line is, I feel like he's going to sing Raspberry Boomy. But oh, um, Prince yeah, is in the good. room. <laughs> he's alive and well. Liam, take it away with the next one, please. Next one, I love you, dear. We're uh, feeling down. Um, feeling down, I was around this tune. I didn't really, didn't resonate with it much, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, I didn't like the sample say what? Thing going on. It's, the, it's my least favourite of some of the recent ones, uh, but I did like it. It felt really moody, um, which is probably the vibe they're going for with the track Feeling Down. Um, I like it. And as I say every time, singers' vocals, oh, I just fucking love them. Um, well, I mean, as, I don't know how to feel about this. I really like this song. Um, what, initially, with the, the weird vocal effect thing that, was it in it? I thought, oh, I'm probably not going to like this. But then second time around when they came in, I thought, actually, this is my favourite part <laughs> when it goes to the weird vocals. Yeah, I found um, that annoying. I think that's part of what... Yeah, oh, that might be it. why it's clicked with me and it hasn't with you then. Maybe it's just that one part. Um, but okay. anyway, yeah. And then I, I like the line, no man's an, no man's an island, I'll repeat it again, but I can be your holiday. Um, I like that. Maybe chuckle. Um, yeah, I think it's a good. I do think it's a pretty alright song. Like I'm not um, against it at all. Um, <laughs> but it just didn't blow my mind. Sadly. Well, my tiny mind was blown. Um, <laughs> me Rex, back me again. Rex. This one is an old school <laughs> friend of the pod, although we've never spoken to him personally. Um, Toilet of Venus. Um, is the name of the track. I thought this was very different. I can't remember the last one we covered, but I feel like we also said that about the last one. It was different. Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, mm. But yeah, this one was really took me um, by surprise. Um, it wasn't a bad tune, in my opinion. I just couldn't gel with it. Fair enough. Mm. Um, it felt really positive, which is a vibe I've not really had from Me Rex before. Um, I don't like it anywhere near as much as I liked some of the last EP. But I do feel like it would be a good soundtrack tune. Maybe soundtrack in a game or something. Just kind of Yeah, the simp sound is very kind of like SNES sounding beat em up SNES. game. Yeah, I definitely get that. I know exactly what you're saying. But then, um, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed this. I think he's really good at, um, or they as a band are really good at melodies, just hooks mm. and stuff. Very quite good at that. I mean, the style maybe isn't for a lot of people's liking, and obviously vocally it's quite a chalk and cheese. Not chalk and cheese. That's the wrong word. <laughs> um, chalk and cheese. That's a completely different saying. Uh, quite a marmite kind of thing. Um, but yeah, and I enjoy it. I enjoyed it, and the more I listened to it, I was kind of like, yeah, this is a good, fun, uh, you know, happy song. Yeah. To be fair, I don't often eat chalk. I don't eat cheese, so. Yeah, chalk and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh gosh! The return of Jamie T once again. <laughs> um, he's oh back with he the is. song "The Old Style Raiders." Um, massive chorus in this, I thought, yeah. and it's one of those ones that I wasn't mad on at first, but it's grown on me significantly yeah and that i find that all is always the case for or has been for the the, the um debut songs of the of the album that he releases apart from was, what was the f- tin foil boy was the one for trick boy it? it was yeah but they like, um Not heard that uh, ages. don't you find and was there another one i don't know um, do you want to stop ringing out loud? <laughs> God. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, this zombie. one was, was, was. Don't you find before zombie? Sorry to cut the question. Yeah, yeah. Don't you find was the first one he so, brought out, I believe. Well, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. The, back to this song. Massive chorus, like I say. Um, really grown on me, and very much like it. it I, I want to see this live. Is what I'm trying to say. 100. <laughs> percent Um, musically, I think this feels like a step up. Uh, from the last album i did like quite a lot on the last album but i don't know this just feels different to me um the vocals are kind of what you expect but there just seems to be a lot 
more emotion behind it. Maybe it's because the chorus is so impactful. I don't know. Mm. But this is the shit I like. Um, not for me. No, I didn't think it would be. No. Um, yeah, I thought not. it was a bit laddish. Oh, hey. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I just um. I mean, we talked about this before, and like how when we talked about the that panic prevention, and I kind of mentioned, or one of us mentioned around like the so many artists that have kind of followed this, and you know, especially like buskers and stuff, it tends to be that they seem to sing like this. Um, that just kind of falls into that category for me. Maybe when I listen to a full album, I'll feel differently, but um. Yeah, it just isn't something that I'd choose to listen to. Well, That's speaking of stuff I wouldn't choose it to listen good, to. Though. Sorry, just to say it sounded Fuck good. you, Liam. Perfect segue. Oh, come on. Everyone heard it. Everyone heard it. Um, Kasabian with the song Scripture or Script Ver. <laughs> um, it's shit. If you've not listened to it, save your ears and avoid it. I, I, I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Um, it's definitely not the direction they should go. And I am very convinced that Surge is midway through a crisis. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I fully understand that they probably want to re, uh, you know, uh, re, what's the word I'm looking invent. for? Reinvent. Reinvent. Yeah. Kind of. Is that, I, I think that is the word. So yeah. I, I get that, but I don't know. Maybe not in this way. I don't know. Why though? I yeah, I don't like maybe from their last album. They they change, well, you know, most from album to album, mm. pretty much the whole way through. But like, they could have gone to like an older style. I don't know. I feel I the older albums feel very surgy to me. Oh, I always thought of them as being mm. surgy. Oh, sorry, like like around West Rider, that kind of period. Uh, not all, not the oldest ones, but yeah, this just seems completely the wrong direction. It yeah. sounded it's it seemed like it was promising at first. Yeah, I was gonna say so I, I really like the like... intro. That's really powerful and I like the mm. verse melody, but god the chorus. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it was literally it just got to like that point and I was like, Oh well, this is shit. What <laughs> where I was like I was bopping away until that point and then yeah, no, not good. I, it's a shame. I think like the SLP stuff that for Sabian, did, mate. No, I'm saying that the stuff he did <laughs> in the SLP <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> was better than this. Okay. It was I, hands I down, know. hands up, hands all around. Hug everyone. Um, yeah, SLP was. There was a lot more sort of um, experimentation on that one. I thought as well. Yeah, it seemed like I don't know. Maybe there's in their minds they've got sort of a a fan expectation that they need to conform yeah. to. So it maybe is affecting that because. Like I said, with the SLP, there seems to be a lot more things that are a bit more out there. Yeah, well, um, they're trying to fill arenas, aren't they? I suppose that's kind of like what. But they they're... they can do that anyway. With the, they've got all with their old some... materials. That it's not as if people would stuff, turn around. They and... need to fit that quota, don't they? As well, so, you know what I mean, that's I think that's what they're going for without doing the same old stuff. Mm. And this, this is... is significantly different to Alligator, though, which sounded a bit more Kasabian. Hmm. Yeah, but just not good Kasabian. <laughs> I'm gonna have to revisit that because I feel like I've put that oh, I'll, I'll again that on my brain. Again, that chorus, fucking tragic. Serge, if yeah. you are going for uh for arenas, that's not the way to do it, mate. <laughs> not right, it does sound more old <laughs> Take it from me. Actually. Yeah, I just don't know what the like what. Surely he's always been involved. You know, it, it's he's the, the he's been the, the songwriter anyway, Tom, isn't it? Yeah. So it's yeah, all yeah. of them apart from Tom. And Serge so, has always been the songwriter. And Serge is already is a decent vocalist, so we're not really missing that element. No. Maybe did he write the lyrics as well? Has that always been? Is, is, I think so. Falls? I assume, I understand to, I assume that Tom... Serge did everything. Oh, well, so yeah. what the fuck? Where has he just <laughs> suddenly decided that to be shit? Like, even the last album was all right. Uh, had a few all right tunes. Pretty, all Ill, right. Ray's, Ill Ray's a banger. Other than that. But, like, the freaking... Frick and Frick, yeah, uh, <laughs> Saloon Dion. What a name. Uh, great. Uh, great name it is. What a name. That's why I told you. Well, I thought them, there's got to be some reason other than the music. The song's called Pressure. Um, this was a bit too support band for me. 
it that's fair. I, it didn't set yeah. the world right, but it was a good two minute banger. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more because it was that length. But <laughs> sorry, Carl. Then um, it is your time to speak, though. I was going to say, you <laughs> cut out for a second, so I don't even know what you said. Um, Insert yourself in. Uh, yeah, I agree that it's very um, support <laughs> acty. Um, it reminds me a bit of Shame as well, Shame's first album. Um, and it reminded me of that a bit too much, I think, that I couldn't really. But I know I enjoyed it. This, uh, sorry, I still enjoyed it. I just think like I'm not really satellite by it. Uh, it's just world's satellite not been satellite. satellite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, SX and KSI, the dream team, have reunited once again for another song. This one's called Locked Out. I fucking hated this. This was electronic pop punk with a fucking chumba wumba interpolation. What the fuck was going on in this song? Um, yeah, it's not for me by any stretch of the imagination. I was very surprised by KSI's verse. And not to give him props for it sounding good, but props to him for trying something different because I just wasn't expecting it to be delivered in the way it was. Uh, wasn't good, though. But I can see what they're going for because it is quite catchy and it will do well. Just it's just not good. <laughs> mm. It's funny that you mention this is like slightly different from KSI, but because I agree with that. But also, this feels like a very natural progression for the music he was at. Yeah, when you fair. look at artists like like Machine Gun Kelly and that kind of like. I feel like there's a massive crossover now between this pop punk and um whatever you call that rap rap that yeah. kind of rap. But I don't know what it would be. Um, but yeah, there must seems to be a massive like cross section of that. But um, I kind of thought this was all right. Uh, I thought the lyrics were awful. Um, whenever I caught wind of a line, I thought that's sound that's shit. That's a shit line. The UK size was god awful. Um, it's all right. Yeah, well, from one of uh, the UK's greatest rappers to arguably the US's best rapper. That's right. Kendrick, K Dot, Kung Fu Kenny, Oklahoma, The Goat Hath Returned, Bars, Bars, Bars. So it's Kendrick good. Lamar, The Heart Part 5, which means we already know this, but the album's approaching its release. In and this three is three days upon recording. A little tease although the the heart ones don't typically then sound much like what the album ends up sounding like but he still got it oh he's never in doubt that Um, part where the drums drop out and it's just bass and percussion yeah fucking hell i mean speaking of the musical side of it it's marvin gay sample Mm -hmm. and it is a bloody good sample and I think they did a great job of adding their own bits to make it more in line with today's modern rap. We had a fat kick drum, so fat. <laughs> and the bass in this was amazing. Um, yeah, as you can tell, very much liked it. Yeah, and the video's music. great, sorry, as well. I know we don't talk about videos, really, yeah, but the, video the video's great. Shit. Video yeah, is so, great. Should we talk a bit more about the video for a second? Because that is... Yeah, yeah. I actually, when it started playing, I was watching because obviously he's grown his hair a bit, which was already a bit different. But I did think his face looked weird. I need to ask: was his face also superimposed? No, no. It almost looks like it was. <laughs> but like when it started tra- changing faces, I was like, oh, maybe it was. But I was very, <laughs> but, uh, very, uh, very kind of powerful, I suppose. Yes. So person, the though. video is Kendrick against sort of like a background um rapping and then there's deep fake which was done by the creators of south park it's their company oh, um, oh really matt so parker weird. and i don't know whatever his other guy's name is um or trey parker and matt stone got the wrong way around so anyway um yeah and then it, it morphs his face into other um OJ. key black men figures such as OJ, Will Smith, um, Kanye, Kanye uh, Nipsey Hussle, yeah. and the uh, guy who Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, and the other guy who um, said that something happened when it didn't, and he's been found guilty of basically lying <laughs> about something. Um, I'm not going to get into that here. Just you know, <laughs> find out yourself. Um, it touches on things we're not equipped to talk about. Um, so. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, anyway, but it, it's good. And the verses um, go in line with the sort of person who his yeah. face uh, transforms into. Um, so, like onions, there's layers. There are it's layers. very, it's, um, it's, this is art. This is like actual 100%. Like, art. I, mm-hmm. I really felt that when I was watching the video and listening to it. I was like, this is like a genuine piece of art that's like, should be recognized for a long time. But like lyrically ah. unbelievable. Some of the rhymes, I don't know, I just, it, there's one part where it, it's not exactly rhyming, but he rhymed urging with worry or something like that. I'm sure they were like the last two li- words of the lines and it somehow worked really well. <laughs> so but, uh, Iggy is earlier, music. take note. <laughs> and then um, the music, like you say, Jan is unbelievable. And it just sounds so good, especially for like a sample. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know wow. this won't be on uh, the album, but I am so unbelievably hyped for that record to come out. Yeah, I mean, he, he couldn't have released a better song to get people hyped for this if they weren't already. Um, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, very, 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 very excited. Um, Talking about a great song to get people hyped for an album. Uh, well, that's weird because we're talking about Black Midi next, so I don't know why you'd say that. Um, the Let's song Plan B. That's a shit joke. Me. He's got a song called Welcome Sorry, to Hell. It's really, it's that. very, very Oh, niche. yeah, it, that is <laughs> so... You've popular. got to have some back, background knowledge of the defamation of Strickland Banks for that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hell, not by Plan B, by Black Midi. Um, this was okay, That's in my progress. opinion. Uh, the drums were mental, and I felt, felt exhausted listening yeah. to them. Um I enjoyed it, but I don't know if I've ever put it on myself. That's I wouldn't fair. choose to listen to Cal, it. Do you want to hear some real progress? Oh, I do. Fucking love this song. Yeah, man. Honestly, I don't know what yeah, it is. Man. I was just going for it. Going for it. That's not what I was saying. Not what I was saying. <laughs> just no, I'm so, so excited. I'm listening to it again now, and it's getting me pumped. Um, there's something... Uh, right, so of all the Black and Windy songs I feel like I've ever heard, this was the most seemed like the most structured... Hundred percent, like the most accessible. Hundred percent. Although it seemed to like go into like kept stepping up in a way, if that makes sense. Um, it still felt very structured. I loved like the main kind of melody or hook or whatever you could call that from every instrument. There's just so much fucking going on all at once at mm. every single second. But yeah, really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed yeah. it. I thought the um the drums were fucking insane. Yeah, Morgan Simpson is fucking incredible. He is an unbelievable drummer. Yeah, but I would do. And the rest of the band, uh, again, are oh, also brilliant. I thought his vocals were really good on this. It really reminded me of... Um, um, cut that. Cut that. <laughs> um, no. What's the band called? Um, Where is he from? Les Claypool. I don't know. I think he might... Uh, well, They're gonna... from London, I think. I think he speaks like. There was like an London. Irish <laughs> tinge to some of the words he was saying. Yeah, I got that for sure. Pretty sure he's English. Um, the band that Les, Les Claypool are in, I can't. Primus. There we go. Primus. I was just uh, I know they've had a lot of kind of um, comparisons over time, which I've always seen, I suppose, but I felt a bit more in there. But yeah, mm. I just really enjoyed it. Really got me pumped. Uh, I'm looking forward. I hope it's more like this the rest of the album. Yeah, good um, shit. Following Whoa. this, I went and listened back to John L. Um, and I still don't. Oh, yeah, fucking this, hell. This, John this really great. is just feels like a different plane to me. Well, it's funny you say the that great. the part that comes in about three minutes, the, the real change up where it gets a bit hectic, that is mm. extremely Schlagenheim, the first record. Just <laughs> feels like that, but with with like refined songwriting ability it doesn't yeah. just feel like just mental for mental's sake but yeah I like track... Schlagenheim more than uh, Cavalcade I agree so I might go back and listen to that I agree um, I think you should but yeah this just it, it's just superb It's it just feels really like cinematic and just big it's yeah. just wonderful for me love it did you watch a video? I did Music yeah video. that was crazy wow. what a trip <laughs> very good I I also very much enjoyed that Um, the video I mean I may not make this statement around the music because I feel like I've already set a very high bar 
But that video was art. That was like crazy good. And like the different art styles and stuff I thought was insane. Was it a continuation yeah. from something else? Because the video looked familiar. I felt like I'd watched it before or was like the characters in it been used in another video that they've done? I don't know. It's that kind of like style of... Do you, do you know that picture that's on Twitter sometimes where you can't depict anything in the picture? You can't. <laughs> yeah. You can't make anything out. Yeah. I feel like that art style is used by a lot of bands now, like post punk bands. Like it was like Squid did a similar thing. Um to an extent like caught in on the tennis cover. There's been quite a few bands that have done that, so unless it's just kind of it's just so in the uh in the air at the moment. That's why it feels familiar. Nice. Um next one, Wu Lu with the song Blame. Whose choice was this? I don't know. It wasn't was mine, so it was Liam's. But cool. um, this uh, death grips was in any way related to this. Yeah. See, this I, is what I say. The drums made it sound really yeah. death grips, but I don't think they are actually related. <laughs> uh, but question. they do sound like this. I was disappointed by this because the drums made it sound hard as fuck, and then it just kind of didn't really deliver on that. I thought the vocals sounded a bit weak. And they should have kind of come through the mix a bit more. They needed to be grittier and just a bit harder, but they just they just kind of weren't, which I was really disappointed with because at the start I was like, oh, yes, but no. Yeah, I put, I put this on because I recognize the name Wulu from one of their other songs, Legend, which I really like. Um, so I put it on before I kind of listened to it. And then when I listened to it, I was like, oh, I'm quite kind of glad. Uh, but then I ran into the same issues as you, Carl. So I feel like the vocals just needed more. Um, mm-hmm. And then Andy. I enjoyed the song a lot more. Um, but yeah, I kept it on for us to discuss because I feel like it's it's almost there. For me. It is a hundred percent almost there. It's good. I, good I like ideas. the style for sure. Well, um, that's it. The smile. <laughs> have you not said anything about? You've not said anything about blame, have you? Just the death grips comparison. I didn't really, yeah, didn't really like it though, to be oh. honest. Um, the smile back with the song "Thin Thing." Um, to be honest, these last three tracks that we've, sorry, last two tracks were were about to immediately cover. Um, I haven't realised that they were on here, so <laughs> I'm currently listening to the as we go through. Um, wasn't I'm, well, I'm not really that interested in the smile one. Um, it's okay, but not my favorite of the things that they've that's been released so far. Um, the, the musicality of it's good, but just not really uh, getting me. Fair enough. It did. I, I don't like it as much as the one that was on Peaky Blinders. The name of that escapes me. Um, anyone know that? No, okay. no. Okay, bro. Not so um, but I think it's still extremely the good. Smoke. This, no, the synth uh, of things yet to come. Maybe is that what it's called? Is that one? Who knows? Um, Just look at the names of the songs. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but the the synth riff was nice. I really like that. Yeah, that was one hundred percent a highlight for me. Uh, yeah, I agree. And the distorted guitar line that comes in, um, it kind of gets gradually more distorted. It sounded really cool. And I thought vocally it was pretty good as well. Um, I just wish they do better fucking single art. <laughs> like I hate, I hate it. It's so stupid. Like the first few were fine when it was, up, but that made it more annoying. Is the first few were a black background with like silver and gold writing, and then this one's fucking red and pink. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I just don't get it. Uh, free in the knowledge was the one that I really liked. Lots yes. of things yet to come. That's, that's what I said. Oh, that's block party of things yet to come. Um, oh, uh, we covered it, and I did listen to a bit of it. That block party album wasn't that bad, was it? No, it was good. It was oh, okay. Yeah. Some yeah. some high moments. The ones you said were the best, <laughs> all the best. Um, yeah, on that. I listened to it too. Um, second to last, Ezra Furman. We mentioned them at the start. Um, the song that we're covering from this upcoming album is "Forever in Sunset." Um, which you know you can understand why it would be that hot, uh, and my why it might end up all all of us in flames. Yeah, um, yeah, so sure. yeah, I like this one. Surprise! I've got something nice to say about the song. Um, <laughs> I liked the chorus. Uh, it got heavier. They were giving it more vocally, um, and I like that. I like the grit. 
Yeah, I yeah. really like the grit on this one as well. I thought she sounded really good. Um, I like the the kind of theatricalness of the, or maybe not cinematic, is probably a better word. The sound of like the do 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 do. That part I was really good. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. I'm looking forward to this album. I pre-ordered it. Thoughts mirrored. Was cash. it with, with liquid money or fake with money? Cash. Yeah, I did because on the Bella Union website, um, they're doing it with a signed lyric book, which is only Lovely. approved them. And so, I thought, okay, throw some, throw some longer down for Ezra. Good shit. Yeah, thoughts mirrored on your thoughts, boys. And that takes us to the last track of the week before we get into our trusty album spotlight. Spoiler alert. And we come with Deep Tan, with the last track on their EP called Diamond Horsetail. Is that what the EP is called as well? It is. It is. Lovely. Lovely. Um, yep, we've listened to the all... Three. Yeah, we have listened to them all. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so we're just yeah. focusing on this track. And like a lot of the other Deep Tan tracks, I'm a big fan of the bass. Um, and I really like the change up that comes in around the two minute mark. Uh, I can imagine it being extremely good live, and I think mm. this is a strong end to a decent EP. Yeah, I mean, if you like Deep Town stuff, you're going to like the EP, because it sounds like Deep Town. And it's, well, it's very consistent. Um, yeah, I don't mind this last song. Um, it didn't seem as much like the others did, where it was intentionally off-putting at points. I, I think I've made that comment, haven't I, about the, the some yeah. of their tracks. Um, although, obviously, there was some juxtaposition um, between some of the notes minutes. <laughs> that were being played with the bass and the guitar. Um, it, it felt more com- complimentary uh, than on some of the songs they've released or that are on the EP. Uh, and I, I agree, Hal. The, the change-up uh, is good. And, yeah, I reckon that would also sound good live. Yeah, Ian. I agree. Uh, I agree. I think this is my favourite of the EP. Um, good closer. Um, great bass. Yeah, I, I, I don't really. I haven't got. Can't expand much more. But yeah, the other different sections of the song all sound is really cool. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, good stuff. Sick. Well, um, like you will occasionally find. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> Um, do you like things in twos? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Twice in the agreement. Calls. Then Jeez. I reckon that you're gonna love the next segment. Okay. So you know, people at home, now I'm directing this to you. Stay on board. We're gonna get there eventually. It's the album spotlight. You'll see why I said twos in a minute. Well, less than a minute because the jingle's actually not that long. Um, you know, um, how long can I drag this out for? How long? Do you want me to cut it now? Cut now? Album spotlight, maybe? Album spotlight right now. Let's let's insert that jingle. Uh, yeah, it's a good time for the jingle. Good time, good time. Here we are. The the albums came marching two by two. Hurrah! hurrah it's a double ender. Hurrah. The albums came marching two by two. Hurrah. Cock hurrah. <laughs> um, You've got on both this week, baby. We, we yeah. do. Which let's which? start with... <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the cock. Uh, yeah. Arcade Fire are back. Oh, no. Uh, oh. No. It's, no. Completely no. the wrong way around there, Cal. No. no really? No, no, no. Completely wrong way around. Completely wow. Well, let's start yeah. with the balls, then. Oh, Why do you want to do Arcade Fire first? Again. That's so confusing. <laughs> also, it's War, Warpaint's first one of this, so you really yeah. put it off. Oh, is it? Oh, I've done that wrong then. That's that's my bad. Let's just start this whole segment again, shall we? No, let's just carry on. I'm Carl's the editor, so... No, I'm the editor, so... No, this is all staying in. Keep that, keep that. Uh, <laughs> Warpaint. <laughs> Thanks, Warpaint Dave. back with their new album, We. Oh, <laughs> like um... When was the last album out from more paint? A few years ago. Yeah, that's a very that's a very good question you've asked there, mate. Um <laughs> really good. I'm glad that you've asked you. it. It was twenty sixteen and that album was of course called Heads Up. War... Of course. Oh, it was one called Warpaint. Was that one before? I've uh... not listened to any of the latest albums. 
Say what you want about me. New song. Uh, is I did about listen to Dickhead. this one. I did listen to this one a few times. Quite a few. Which, which, which I didn't. Uh, and we're going to talk about that now. Yeah, right. please talk. Please talk. Okay. Um, You're the guy. Well, I've listened to this in full multiple times. Unfortunately, the first couple of times I didn't make any notes. So scrambled to get some notes for this uh, just before we started recording and didn't get to the last two. Um, so that's fun. We're going to start off, um, as we do, with the opening track, which is Champion. We've covered this before. Um, no news here. It's still a banger. It is. That is correct. It's a great opening to an album. Ethereal makes me feel nice. Ethereal. Yes. Warm what drop, word to use. Warm drop. Mm. <laughs> it does. Warm self. Um, then straight into Hips, which is the third single they released um, from the album. Um, I still like this. A bit more of the darker side, which I, I commented on when we covered it first last week, maybe. Um, I like the groove of it as well um the electronic drum machine groove that it has don't know whether that's grown on you anymore cal since the last time you heard it um i can't remember what i said about this was this my least favorite of the ones yes you said there was like an annoying drum sound oh maybe i, I didn't notice at this time um i liked it but it's not one of my faves but it's it's one of my least favorites of my favorites put it that way okay um well but I really liked the, the the main riff. I thought that carried the song really well. It was decent. It, it was all right. I really like the uh, vocals on this. Uh, yeah. You get a few, a few of the uh, war paints singing. <laughs> and that weird, I don't know what it is, but it's like kind of like Asian sounding. I don't know what part of Asia. Do you know what I'm saying? The like, um, kind of warbly. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you're trying to say. You know what I'm talking in about, a very what bad way. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know what really that like is, that. but it is a cool effect, isn't it? I like the sound of that. Yeah, really dig that. But I don't <laughs> like this song after Champion. I think this is a bad place for this song. Basically. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't um, not work. No. Um, after that, we've got Hard to Tell. Um, fits the vibe of. Most of the album, which is just that it's very chill, um, doesn't require much attention to just sort of zone out to it. Um, that's going to be a recurring theme um, from my comments. It's a very chill tune. It's good. The album as a whole, just to sort of touch on this now before we start struggling for things to say, is consistent. Um, the vibe is there, but don't expect... Um, high energy. Mm. I agree, but other than Champion and a song we'll mention in a minute, this is probably my favorite on the record. I really like the sound of the synth, and I thought the vocals were really nice in this song, especially when the chorus goes a bit in like a higher register, and the bass that was in the background on that part was oh, oh, it was beautiful, beautiful. Um. I'm just going to say that I agree with what you said, Yanni. And I don't know if you were trying to do this by just trying to skip over the songs by saying that, but I agree. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mate. In general, um, it's all a pretty good vibe. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Stevie is a, another one. This is one of the singles, second single that was released on the lead up to the album. Um, still really, really like this. Oh, it's the song of the album for me, boys. Why are you laughing at it? Did I miss it? No, I was just doing that. Yeah. I assume that's why he's laughing at um, it. Oh, it's fucking wonderful. This is like the ultimate sunset drive window down song. Yeah. the Yeah, everything about this. The pacing of the track is great. The vocals are ethereal to steal your word, Carl. Um, yeah, still a great song. Yep, this is where I'm checking out now, boys. Okay, well, I'll my comment it, earlier refers refer to that. Uh, um, I actually don't share the, the insane look for this one. Insane. Um, you are I insane. Think a good tune. I think it's got a really good bass sound, which most of the album does have, obviously. Um, obviously. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't quite do it for me, to be honest. And I'll okay. also check out there. Right, I'll try and make this... Um 
a bit better then. Um, well, should we light just, sweetness. Yeah, should we any high points? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, trouble. Notes. Trouble had a very nice combination of the voices. That was a very standout part for me yeah. um, of that particular track. Mm. Proof might be a contender for one of my favorites off the album. Um, I really like the guitar parts that come in halfway through. Yeah, They're very that... nice, and uh, again, the vocals were great. I wasn't really that arsed until there was like a vocal effect that happened uh, that pulled me back in and I started to kind of like take more notice of it. And then I did like this song, but that was kind of the last song on the album that I was really that arsed about. Okay. Yeah, I um, I enjoyed Trouble and Proof as well. They're like two of the standout among the rest kind of thing. Altar, um, Altar, Altar, Altar. Altar? Altar. <laughs> I've said them all, so I might. <laughs> I'll I'll say, I'm right, but we'll never know which one. Um, oh. This one fits with hips. So to mention a point that you made previously, uh, hips is in the wrong place on the album. This would have worked better if these two songs were right next to each other. Um, I like the rhythm of this one. Um, again, quite a sort of stiff robotic sound, although it is a more natural drum uh, sound that's being used in this one but yeah um, then it sort of goes to melting and sending send to nudes even which is a bit of a change up it's acoustic um, not purely acoustic there's other instruments that come in um, but it highlights the vocals quite nicely um, and there's a nice synth sound that's used in it um again like i said before the vibes there um it's just it, it's not gonna um blow you away no i agree i think uh, yeah i changed from listening on a decent speaker to just listening through my phone for like the last four maybe so maybe that is kind of why i didn't really care for the end but i just thought it just it was just a bit boring wasn't it yeah, yeah, I felt yes. the same. Yeah, yeah. I think I I quite like Ten News. I think I know you both mentioned you haven't really listened to it properly, but um, oh, yeah. I think that's a great tune. Oh, sorry, I thought you said before you didn't manage to listen to it. No, you um, stupid bitch. Um, but I don't think it's a good closer, which kind no, of I agree. makes it not feel like a good song. But it is a good song, and I think the end of Melting's good, where it builds up. Maybe that would have been a better ender. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, no. In, in general, this album for me was just a bit boring. Nice, pleasant. You can definitely have it on in the background. Yeah. But like, if you want to kind of have something that's slightly engaging while you're doing something else, like I do, um, this just isn't just doesn't fulfil that sound need very well. Um, um, which is a bit of a shame. I wish there was a bit more going on. Yes, I see your point. For me, it's the opposite. If I'm doing something, I could quite easily have this on, um, just because it isn't that engaging. Um, so it. it does what it needs to for my senses. Yeah. See, I need, uh, I need to be overloaded by everything. Yes. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the World Paint album. So, unfortunately, I think we were all a bit disappointed by it. Um, to be honest, though, apart from their first ever thing they released, their EP, um, I've not really liked the full piece of, of work that they've ever put out. It's just Same. that they do have some very, very good songs. Um, and, I mean, this also features very good songs. So, um, yes, um, we're going to review it quickly. Um, Cal? Oh, I hate that I have to go first sometimes. Um, I'm going to give this an extremely harsh six because Stevie is one of my favourite tracks of the year. And I just don't think the, the whole record lived anywhere near to the expectations I thought it would have. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to give it a six and also say that I also appreciate it's very harsh. Like it, It's in another day a seven, but that's not today. But we record on Tuesdays, so I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. And because we record on Tuesdays, I'm also giving it a six. Oh. Yeah. Um, so oh, really? I don't think it's very harsh. Um, it's very consistent. It's just not very, yeah, very not, good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's, <laughs> no, the there's no real wow factor. 
Yes, uh, I actually think brilliant. I'd say good. It, it being not good isn't true. I think it is good. Yeah, it was, um, it's above average. You only just said it's not good, and maybe that's oh. just a you know oh, just the phrase you used in that moment. But it was, yeah. Um, I forgot what yeah, I said. I, I think it's. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> I think it is good. I think it's actually quite real good. Uh, it's just boring. I think that's the issue. Is it's boring. It's it, it's kind of like. It's inventive in terms of style for them, but there's no invention in the actual kind of music. Sounds, which means the <laughs> mode... Is six. And the median? Is six. And the mean? Is six. And the range? Is big fat stonking not. <laughs> for you boys. That's for <laughs> so you, range wow. boys. Okay. Um, Can I just say before we move on? No, no. absolutely not. No, I need to. Yeah, and we will be seeing Warpaint in uh, a few a few weeks. That's that mad. Time. Going to Primavera, are you? Uh, yeah, uh, are actually, no, mate. Primavera Sound, Boston, yeah, so What's cool. happening to the podcast yeah. during that? Are you? Uh, are uh, we missing it? It's a, a one. No, we show. won't miss it. Oh, sound. Um, I just won't be able to edit it. <laughs> yeah, we we, we won't we won't do a visual podcast that week. Uh, are we? We'll be home by then. Yeah, we'll just we'll have an audio only one that week. Oh, Joe. Well, to be honest, we might be waiting for our plane. What time? Do, when? Uh, we'll work that out later. But we might do one live from the airport. Um, that's that's, right. uh, that's oh, asking God. a lot. <laughs> okay, so up the uh, shaft no, we go I to Arcade Fire. I finish, <laughs> finish what I was saying. I didn't, I didn't finish what I was saying. We will be seeing them in a few weeks, is what I was saying. But I hope they don't play any of these songs. Well, they 100% will, won't they? I know, of course they will. But what I a silly thing it, to I, say. But my you point is that, is that I just think they're going to be boring live songs, some of these. It's in a massive Well, game. if they play uh, Champion or Stevie like, no, or... Stevie will be... It's, it's slow. It's like... What, yeah, I know, but it's a nice little Spanish song. song time, it's isn't it? It's fucking war paint, lad. <laughs> 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 right. uh, uh, moving on, on, on to... Shaft. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Up, up the, shaft. the shaft, mate. Up, up the shaft. down to the mush. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Arcade Fire are back. Arcade, Arcade Fire. Fire. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, with the song, we yeah, not the, the song, song, the album, we. Um, it's uh, it's an album we're going to cover right now. Um, I haven't got any notes for this, so okay, we'll do it quickly. Enjoy yeah. this. Um, starts off aging age of anxiety. We heard if I could read and or we'll speak maybe. Um, what do we think of this first song, boys? Uh, I thought it was a good opener. I, I like it quite a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah, I really enjoy it once I get into it, for sure. Um, and when... Is her name Regine? Is that the... Name? That's her name. Regine. Um, when she joins in, obviously that sounds really great. And then there's that cut where it's like that breathing sound. Love that. Absolutely love that part. And then it's just her singing, and he comes back. Love all that. All that good stuff. Very good arcade fire stuff. <laughs> and it got me like... I was like, okay. This is good. Yeah. It's different. It sounds very different. The mm. kind of the sounds, it's a lot more kind of electronic sounding. Um, you know, there's not much guitar or whatever, if, if there's any. Um, but like melody wise, vocal wise, that felt like some good Arcade Fire shit. The, the kind of second half of that song. Yeah, when that bass line comes in, that synth bass line, I was yeah. feeling it. <laughs> um yeah. Yes, well, I like that one as well. I agree. Great opener. Uh, into Age of Anxiety 2, in brackets, Rabbit Hole. Um, again, does feature some, well, quite a lot of electronic elements to this. Um, again, I like this one. It's a bit of a different vibe, though, to the first one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, still a solid track. Just solid. Really like this one, personally. One mm -hmm. of my faves. Uh, the piano chords, are just they just hit very nicely. Just vibes galore, man. Vibes galore. Yeah, uh, I really love this one. I love the. Um... Sorry, what? You're no, you your just your inability to read, <laughs> <laughs> read a silence is. It's it I'm makes, sorry. It's amazing. <laughs> Why did you, had you not stop talking? No, I had yeah, <laughs> about yeah. fucking four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's literal <laughs> seconds. I think there might be a delay. So right. that's not that's not helping because I've noticed a few times you responded. <laughs> Slightly late to what I say. Um, okay, fair play. So shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I um, 
I really like this one. What what is doing the that kind of sound throughout the main part of this song? Uh, it's just a synth. Just a synth. It's arpeggiated yeah. synth. Arpeggiated. Yeah. arpeggiated. <laughs> um, love that, and I love it when it kind of like phases out and then comes back in again. That kind of. Oh, do love trick. phases. Oh, um, give me a phase. Again, great vocals from Regine on this one. Um, which you know, underrated part of Arcade Fire, I think for sure. I agree. 100%. Like some of the best songs are ju- like you know Electric Blue and stuff with just the uh, uh, mountains beyond mountains and things like that. It's really it's key. Cool. Um, and then you've also got obviously Win, whose voice is just great on this album. As well. Yeah, man, totes, totes great. Um, yeah. We go into Prelude, which is pointless. It's a waste of yep. money. Um, yeah, <laughs> complete. <laughs> it's if a I waste of this, time. If I paid money for this, I'd want the percentage of that song back. What a waste of time. Really is completely pointless. Um, but then we go into End of the Empire 1 to 3, um, which is a solid track again. I mean, I've not really got anything bad to say about most of these songs, yeah. if I'm honest. Uh, um, th- this one and... Good, a bit more ballady. This one and End of, end of the Empire 4... Uh, I didn't. I just, it was it was nice enough, but I just it did it didn't nothing for me personally. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Jan, and there's nothing bad to say about them, but there's not an awful lot that like I can say really like positively about them. You know, mm. like, they're good, they're well done. I just wouldn't choose to listen to these two songs. I also think within the album, they don't really fit. They could fit within an album, within an Arcade Fire album. This album doesn't seem cohesive in that sense at all. The mm. first two songs. I think it's probably a good job they have the prelude because the next two songs after that are completely different, and I don't, I don't get what the key is. I guess that's the end then of the first side, the first half, which would have been called me or I, whatever it was called. Um, but yeah, thematically, I don't understand. Yeah, I've, yeah, again, yeah, we yeah, we've just covered both those songs, haven't we? Basically, mm-hmm. um, then we go on to the lightning. One, Lightning 2, we'll cover them together because we've already gone over them. Um, I remember saying that I wasn't really that bothered about Lightning 1. That has changed. I very much like this now. And because of that, the reward of having the Lightning 2 is so much greater. Yeah. Um, well, I, I said at the time... so fucking great. I said at the time I preferred the Lightning 1, and I think that's changed now. Yeah. Because I agree the payoff that Lightning 2 has because of Lightning 1 is just amazing. That Did you watch that live performance I sent? I haven't yet. SNL. No. SNL, normally not great, but that performance, yeah, I honestly, I got emotional watching it. It was so good. It's just, um, it's just unbelievable. I mean, obviously, yeah, again, the second half is incredible. One of the best songs of the year so far, for sure. Um, but yeah, that first one, in its own right, is a great song. And the kind of the build up and then to the second part is genius. I think it's it's very, very good. And yeah. again Machine. Does it fit with the rest of this album? No. <laughs> it's literally just four different songs. I put off on the last one, I suppose. Uh well like more than that, because unconditional one and two aren't ready together, are they? No, not um, really. But... Um another standout bit just to touch on that live performance, the bit where uh Regine screams um, when the lightning comes, fantastic, <laughs> chills. Um, mm. and like we said, that into um one of the best songs of the year so far. Moving on to unconditional one, lookout kid. Harmony Hall is the name of the song. Yeah. Um, that you were talking about by uh yeah. whatever the fucking called Vampire um Weekend. Vampire Weekend. Uh, that it very it sounds very much like. Um, this one's grown on me a bit since we first covered it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily choose to put it on, but I wouldn't skip it if it came on. One of those now. Fair play. Yeah. Um, I'm not really mad. Spoiler alert. I'm not really mad on the album as a whole, despite being a, quite a big fan of the tracks individually. Like you yeah. both said, it doesn't really work as a cohesive thing, in my opinion. And I kind of feel like this song is a victim of that because I liked it quite a lot when it was a single. But I, I just kind of 
I don't know. I just wasn't really blown away when it came to this part in the album. Maybe that's because it's after the lightning, which is so brilliant. I don't know. But I, I, I didn't like it as much as I did originally when hearing it in context. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's fair, and I think it's just to do with the album. And I think before I actually go into the song, it's also a it's, it's quite a short album. It feels short. The pacing feels weird to me. Like it, yeah, it feels definitely like weird paced, weirdly paced, rushed. And like a lot of these songs are shorter when they feel like they should be a bit more epic or whatever. And the opposite way around. <laughs> at the same time, epic. it's all a bit weird. It just doesn't really like. It just doesn't really work. Um, but yeah, when it gets to this point. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I will I say, like though... Song in I've, this song's grown on me, for sure. Okay. We'll say, moving on, Unconditional 2, in brackets, Race and Religion, featuring Peter Gabriel. This is my second favourite track on the album. It is a fucking dirty little stonker. It really um, is. I, the rich. minute I heard it, I was like, yes, this is a bit of me. Thank you. Yeah. This is the most FIFA 12 song I've heard <laughs> since FIFA 12. This is insanely good. It's such... It's just, everything about it. I just love it. Again, Reg, Regine. Whew, carrying mm. it through, isn't she, really? Well, all the the three of them singing, Peter Gabriel, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Wynn and Regine, all the vocals merge at mm. some point throughout the song and it they all work so well together. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a really good, um, really good song. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> there is. Brilliant. It's also um, a bit of sort of arcade fire trivia lore. Um, Peter Gabriel has covered "My Body Is a Cage" um, and um, was like a massive fan of that. And there's a lot of people that, well, from looking online, that thought it was actually his song because he made it more popular. Um, so it's kind of nice that they've gone sort of full circle now they're working together on a song. That is but, nice. Um, that is nice. Yeah. Anyway, uh, last song, We. Um, so I was kind of right when I first said it, wouldn't I? We are covering the song yeah. We by Arcade Fire. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, me being right sometimes. Um, again, it's just a bit random, isn't it? Mm. This, I agree. this also <laughs> has the issue of it being strangely paced. The, why isn't this song longer? Why does it seem like it's going to start like building up and it ends? Like, if but I, 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 I like that about it. It shouldn't have ended I... like that. It feels so uh, like unsatisfying. Like it mm. feels like it's kind of like teasing you for something and then it doesn't come. Like, no, I, I quite like that. It feels like the end of a show. I, it just it feels like the end. Maybe if there was more of a show throughout, I'd agree. Yeah. I do get what you're saying. There's not enough beforehand. To me, this actually sounds like something that would be the beginning of an album, and then there'd be a full version further down for Arcade Fire. Something that, you know they kind of do reprise yeah, so and that, stuff like that. Know. Yeah, so, but I I do like the song. I just really wish there was more of it. I wish it was like it went into more. It just feels like a massive shame. It's not showing it. It's half fine. Sorry. Get a new joke, Cal. Fuck oh. off. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, it's not sorry. So, what a plate for you there. Christ. That's good, that, mate. Uh, good joke, Cal. Sorry. Um, what do we think of the artwork, by the way? Um, uh, I think it's kind of cool. It's all right. I Which way is the eye looking? Gives okay. me uh, Harry Potter vibes. Okay. Transfer. Don't know why. Yeah, um, so we're gonna write this one again because that's what we do. Was this released on their own label? Oh, that's odd. Um, anyway, yeah, rate it, Cal. Go ahead. Seven. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven too. Sorry to be boring. Uh, I'm also gonna give it a seven. <laughs> it's a weird one because, like, when I said seven, then I also then thought about how much positive praise we just gave it. Yeah, but as an it album, so we, 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 we did we did say weird, it? at the time it doesn't really work cohesively. Yeah. We, we praised individual tracks. We didn't. I didn't really like it as an album. Why, isn't it? Yeah, they, 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 for some reason they've just fucked up how to make an album on this one. It, it's well, like, you know, a lot of people don't like the last one. I personally quite like it, and like that was didn't have these issues. 
It's just that some of the songs weren't quite as good. From what I've heard, um, well, this was made during lockdown, and uh, it was just Wynn and Regine without any of the other band members for most of the writing process. And they said that they were going a bit mad when they were doing it. So I, when you sort of, when you watch interviews of them talking about the making of this, it, it kind of makes sense that this is the product. Um, but yeah, I, so... I, I, I feel yeah. like it's a bit of a shame that the album, that the songs aren't kind of held within something just as good, if that makes sense. Like there's songs I want to hear as part of an album of good songs, whereas it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't hold it very well in that in that space if that makes sense um mm. which i think is uh, a shame not the band yeah um so mode median mean what are they liam scythe scythe and the range is again dim big dim <laughs> big big dim <laughs> um <laughs> big dim. <laughs> so um that's the double ended spotlight for you this week um if you've liked it, like the video, like it, subscribe. Hate this. And if you <laughs> comment about what your favourite part was, if you agree, if you disagree, below. Yeah. Um, if, if you're listening to this, work. <laughs> and, and yeah, and if you're listening to this, just listen and not on YouTube. Find us on YouTube at Falls on a Hill. Don't pop the app there. Just type in Falls in the Hill podcast. You'll get us. Um, Instagram and Facebook is at Falls on the Hill podcast. Twitter at Falls on the Hill pod. So, um, yeah. Um, Before we go, Carl, did you listen, or have you listened to the Rolling Blackout album? No. No, actually. I did. Well, I've already done the closing section. Yeah, I know, so. I know. But I've actually got two albums. Uh, I forgot about that. But here we go. We're about music. We're not about closing, are we? Um, yeah. I listened to the Rolling Blackout album, Endless Rooms. More of the singles, a bit lackluster, as I'm sure you'd probably imagine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I listened to the um, Bell and Sebastian album, which the name escaped me. Something about... Don't remember. Um, I actually really enjoyed that. <laughs> Genuinely, I shocked myself uh, how much I enjoyed the album. I think it was very well written, some great melodies, enjoyable listen. So for anyone that wants to listen to something that's kind of nice and enjoyable, <laughs> then listen to the Bones of Austin album. Wow. If, if there's a band out there that's listening to us, they should call either a track or an album or an EP, The Name Escapes Me. <laughs> Just for purely us to... Uh, so this uh, next track, the name escapes me, or the name of which escapes me. That might be better. So you could, Annie. Thanks. Uh, and on that note, um, we will sue you if you do that. So uh, lawyer yeah. up. Patent pending. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Oh, the pleasure has been mine. saying not much mate what are you saying 25 25, yeah he knows it he knows the score he knows numbers i've seen them quite a lot actually in my life (laughs) think about how many numbers you've seen (laughs) (laughs) quite a lot oh we should um (laughs) we should talk a bit for this part for the intro (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Just so there's a bit of a background. Say like grapes and biscuits, grapes and biscuits, grapes and biscuits.